So a lot of people have been asking me the kind of camera I use to take photos like this and even though you might not believe it, all that magic is from the iPhone 14 Pro but there are a few adjustments you need to make to take it to that next level so stick around till the very end to find out. While I'll be using the iPhone 14 Pro to demonstrate, this settings cut across the iPhone 11 onwards minus a few features that the previous gen versions don't have. So buckle up and let's go for the ride. In case you've forgotten, I'll quickly take you through the camera specs before we get into the settings. By far one of the biggest selling points for the iPhone 14 Pro without a doubt upon release was its camera and while it's definitely among the best, it's got a few caveats which I'll be talking about in the course of the video. Starting with the main camera, it comes with a 48 megapixel sensor that has second generation focus shift optical image stabilization, 100% focus pixels, all that sitting behind a 24mm lens that has an aperture of 1.78. The ultra wide camera has a 12 megapixel sensor that has a 13mm lens with an aperture of 2.2, coupled with 100% focus pixels as well. The telephoto camera has two variants, the 2x and 3x telephoto, with the 2x telephoto boasting second generation sensor shift optical image stabilization, 100% focus pixels and a 48mm lens that has a 1.78 aperture. The second 3x telephoto also has a 12 megapixel camera with optical image stabilization 3x, 2x, and 6x, optical zoom range, digital zoom of up to 15 times, all this with the help of a 77mm lens with an aperture of 2.8. Unlike previous gen iPhones, the iPhone 14, the 14 Pro, and the 14 Pro Max have action mode, which we'll talk about a little later in the video. Getting into the settings, First and foremost, the most important thing before using the camera is to ensure you've got the right settings. Over the last 9 months of using the iPhone 14 Pro, I found these settings to be the most ideal when taking photos or shooting video. Jumping into the settings app, you'll scroll all the way to the camera and once in the camera section, you'll start off with formats. Starting with camera capture, I recommend using high efficiency as this will help reduce file size. In addition to that, cinematic mode, 4K at 60 frames per second, 1080p at 240 frames per second and HDR also require high efficiency. Enabling most compatible will always use the JPEG format and when it comes to post, will be a bit limited when it comes to the amount of data you'll work with, in the sense that you would have the flexibility when editing your exposure, the white balance and color of your photos. This also explains why you should enable Apple Pro Raw. Something to note though with Apple Pro Raw, the file sizes are going to be massive, hence a good backup system is going to be important, for example iCloud, or if you prefer more storage space on your phone, you can always transfer them to external storage like an SSD or a hard disk drive. Moving down to Apple ProRes, I don't have it enabled owing to the fact that I don't use it that often. When it comes to how I record my video, 4K at 30 frames per second is my preferred setting as this gives me higher resolution and when I want to change my speed in post, I use 4K at 60 frames per second to allow me slow the videos or make them fast without losing quality. Now, I know most people prefer 4K at 24 frames per second since it's the industry standard but 30 frames per second works best for me. I also have enhanced stabilization enabled and this stabilizes video when in video or cinematic mode by slightly zooming in. When it comes to HDR, in my opinion, this is the biggest downside I've encountered. With HDR enabled, a lot of the photos or videos tend to appear overprocessed. This made me dig around the internet and after doing my research, I realized disabling view full HDR in photos helps solve the problem. The final setting I have enabled here is camera lock, which ensures the camera does not automatically switch while I'm recording video. Speaking of recording video, I like to preserve my camera settings when I do so in the sense that when I open my camera app, it goes where I left it and that is the same with other settings I have enabled in this area. When it comes to recording slow motion, I have it at 1080p at 240 frames per second and when recording in cinematic mode, I have it at 4K at 30 frames per second. Moving on to composition, I usually have the grid enabled as it helps to compose my photos or videos properly when shooting. Moving on with the settings, I have the front camera and view outside the frame disabled as I don't really use them. When it comes to photo capture, I've enabled prioritize faster shooting so that the image quality can intelligently adapt when I'm rapidly pressing the shutter. Finally, lens correction is also enabled to correct distortion on the front and ultra wide cameras. With the camera settings up and running, let's now jump into the camera app. Since majority of the people out there use the default camera app, we'll stick to it even though there are some really good third party apps like Highlight, which offer more customizations when taking videos and photos. Opening the camera app, we are met with a bunch of icons which the average consumer might find a little bit too hard to understand, but I'll break it down for you. Starting from the left hand corner, we have the flash which I prefer to have on auto, so that when shooting my camera automatically senses there's a need for more light and automatically turns on. 
Right next to it is the night mode icon which comes in clutch when shooting video or photos at night. In the middle there's an arrow but I'll come back to it in just a bit. On the right hand side we have Pro Row and Live Photo respectively and I like to have Live Photos off as it disables Pro Row. Moving back to the arrow, by clicking on it you get access to the features mentioned above and other hidden features. You can also access these features by swiping up to view and swiping down to archive them. The hidden features include aspect ratio and you can pick one according to your preference. For instance, 16x9 is good for shooting horizontal photos and 4x3 in the case of the iPhone would work well for vertical video although 4x5 is the most recommended for vertical video. Next to it we've got the exposure which allows you to change it manually but it can be a bit tricky if you're not a pro, hence the reason why I prefer having it on auto. Up next is the countdown timer which comes in clutch when trying to photograph yourself. Then we have a bunch of filters you could use depending on your test. When it comes to video you only have flash, exposure and the new action mode which comes in handy when recording while on the move. To adjust to a different focal length from any of the standard ones, simply long press on any camera then slide it to your desired focal length. Now, while I'm not Peter McKinnon, over the years I've learned a few tips and tricks that have enabled me to take better photos and videos. First, before taking any photos or videos, you'd want to ensure your camera lenses are devoid of fingerprint smudges as this always results in hazy looking photos or videos. Personally, I use a lens cloth and on occasions where I don't have it nearby, my shot comes in clutch. Next, you'd want to make sure you always have the grid lines on as this helps on composing your shots as mentioned earlier. If you've heard about the rule of thirds, the grid lines make it super easy to achieve and even though there are occasions when this rule can be bent, it balances out the composition. From there, making the shots more interesting by composing shots differently make it engaging and captivating. You'd also want to mix up portrait and landscape orientation. Speaking of composing shots, after the composition is done, you'd want to lock in your exposure and focus by long pressing on the area you want your subject to be in focus and also locking its overall exposure. Failure to do so results in your videos looking amateur since the exposure and focus keep changing midway through the shot. With that, all the key areas have been touched from camera specs and settings to camera app navigation to some tips and tricks, all that is left is the editing. When it comes to editing, you can edit using the inbuilt features on your photos app but that will give you the most basic of editing parameters. Third party apps like Photoshop and Lightroom have a lot more features to take your apps a notch higher but I prefer Lightroom since it's a lot easier to use and if you're in the Apple ecosystem, it syncs the photos across all your devices. While I sometimes use presets, I like editing each photo differently and the parameters I mostly alter are usually exposure, contrast, shadows, blacks, whites, then when it comes to color temperature, I tend to lean just a tad bit on the warm side and if need be, I manually adjust the white balance. From there, I'd go to effects and adjust the texture, quality and details to my liking, after which I add a bit of vignetting. The end product would be something like this. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. Having shot majority of my YouTube videos and thumbnails using iPhones, these are the settings I've found to produce the best quality videos and photos. While the iPhone 14 Pro was the focus, the fundamentals are the same across most iPhones. In conclusion, I'd say smartphones are getting insanely good at doing what traditional full-frame cameras have done and with the ever-improving digital landscape, it's scary to imagine how good these phone cameras will get in the coming years. For someone looking to start a YouTube channel or wondering how to take good quality photos for your socials, there you have it. All you need is your phone and these tips. If you got to this point of the video, leave an apple in the comment section and don't forget to like, subscribe, share and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. To see how I use my iPhone 14 Pro in my day to day life, check out this video. Until then, people of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.